such a love as none can part, such a heart as yours in love. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We welcome you to our live stream in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who shows us the Father. A special welcome to those who are not members of Holy Spirit, but watching our live stream today. We're glad that you can be with us, and we hope that one day you will be able to be with us in person. For those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Nathan Allen, and off camera is Pastor Cassie Todd, and our music director, Mr. Frank Pitts. If anyone has any prayer concerns, please email those to prayer at holyspiritlc.net, and we will add those to our prayer list. For those who are asking, we are indeed planning on having our May 16th food distribution uh, members, check your email. If you are volunteering, you will need to bring a mask with you. And we are utilizing volunteers on both Friday afternoon, May 15th, and Saturday morning, May 16th. Who Those volunteers will help with the actual distribution to those in need in the community. We will send out more explicit directions and instructions via email, so check that. This Wednesday, we will again offer hold an evening prayer at 7 p.m., and as part of that service, we will be praying for medical professionals. Uh, those of you who are uh, family or friends with nurses, as we are remembering Nurse Appreciation Week, we encourage you to email in the name and a picture of a nurse who is near and dear to your heart, and we will include those as a, a video tribute to them as part of that service. Email those pictures to info at holyspiritlc.net. We continue to thank everyone for your ongoing financial support, and you can give either electronically through the website, or mail a check directly to Holy Spirit, and we will make sure that it is deposited in the bank. Again, please remember to check your email announcements regularly, as that is our primary means of communication. You can also find us on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. But now let us prepare our hearts for worship with confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God who chose us in Christ. Let us come to the fountain of mercy. Almighty God, in raising, in raising Jesus, Jesus from, from the tomb, you destroyed the power of sin and death. Hear us as we confess our failure to live the good news of the resurrection. Grant us the radiant power of your grace. Forgive us, heal us, and renew us, so that we may know the joy of life abundant, given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. In great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In obedience to our Lord's command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. 
the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also also with with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. kids, I thought we'd do something a little different today. I thought we'd play a game together. Now, I'm going to have to move for you, but I hope that's okay. I'm going to be red, and let's make you blue. Uh, Let's play Candyland together and see who wins. All right. Two blue. See what you get. Oh, you got a peanut. Look at you get a skip ahead. All right, what do I get? Two yellow. You got two yellow, too. Sometimes that happens. One blue. Oh, you only got to move one space that time. That happens, too, in life. Sometimes we get to skip ahead, and sometimes we go back a little bit. But hey, look at that. You got a lollipop. You got to skip ahead again. See two red. You got two blue. Yellow. Two green. Two red. I'm catching up to you. 
Think you're gonna win? Let's see, you got two green, you're almost there. Ooh, ice cream, I love ice cream. Orange, you made it. You found your way. Let's see if I can find my way too. Oh, we'll have to shuffle those up again because I need another card. I'll just take the top card, there we go. Now I have made it, I have found my way. We both found our way to the castle, to King Candy Castle. I wonder what it's like to be at King Candy's castle with ice cream and stuff. You know, this game, it reminds me a lot of our scripture today. Jesus talks about how he is going to prepare a place for us. Well, one of the disciples says, I don't know the way to get there. And Jesus says, I am the way. That place that Jesus is preparing for us is wonderful and beautiful. And hey, I hope it has ice cream. And he said he is the way. Just like the path right here was clear, Jesus is the way. And when we follow Jesus, sometimes, just like in this game, we're skipping ahead. And sometimes it seems like we're taking a couple of steps back. But as we keep on following Jesus, we find our way to one day, hopefully a long time from now, one day, get to be with Jesus and God in heaven. And I really, really hope there's ice cream. I think I've said that five times. I love ice cream. I really hope there's ice cream in heaven. Speaking about people who help us find our way, I wonder if there's a lady, a woman in your life, maybe your mom or grandma or aunt or a special person right there with you that helps you from time to time. If she's there right with you, go up and give her a big, big hug today. Go ahead, go and give her a big hug. And I want us today to pray for all those women in our life, all those women in our lives that help us to find our ways. And I have a special prayer, and it's written by a colleague, a friend of mine. Her name is Reverend Heather Prince Doss, and we're going to pray for them. So fold your hands, close your eyes, or just keep hugging that special person, and we're going to pray. As a mother hen gathers her chicks, so the Lord gathers and protects his children. As a mother will not forsake her nursing child, even more will the Lord remember those who call on him. We thank you, Mother and God. Holy Spirit, you are everywhere, the Lord and giver of life. We praise you for the gift of mothers through whom you give us life. We thank you for their willingness to nurture life for their trust in you to guide them through the labor of childbirth, the uncertainties of youth, and the letting go of young adulthood. We thank you for all those women who did not give us birth, but through whom you give us abundant life. We thank you for adoptive and foster moms, aunts, grandmothers, and sisters, teachers, social workers, mentors, supervisors, and friends who share wisdom. We ask your tender mercies on all those whose mothers now sing with the heavenly chorus and those mothers who have buried sons and daughters. Grant them your peace, which passes understanding, and the grace to trust their loved ones to your never-ending care. We pray for mothers and daughters who are separated from one another by distance or differences. For those mothers who struggle to provide for their families and for those whose longing for motherhood goes unfulfilled. Grant them sufficient trust in your grace and awake in us compassion for the welfare of all. We thank you, Lord, for all the women who have taught us something of your tender love and fierce care. We pray that our lives might reflect your love and theirs in all things, 
giving honor to Christ, your Son, and the Son of Mary. Amen. Our first reading today comes from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight, And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our psalm is Psalm 31, verses 1 to 5 and then 15 to 16. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle, to keep me safe. For you are my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If that were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him 
and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. You look like your father. I'm hearing that more and more the older I get. Now, to be clear, people have always told me that I look like my brother. In fact, my father would sometimes joke with others, well, if you've seen one, you've seen the other. But the older I get, the more I have to agree that I look more and more like my father and even like his dad. Maybe you can relate. Have people told you that you look like your mom or your dad or your sibling or even a grandparent? And while family physical resemblances are often strong, it goes beyond that to our mannerisms and to our likes and dislikes. For instance, when I was younger, I always saw my dad go off to work or to church in a suit or at least in a a shirt and tie. And that has rubbed off on me and how I dress. And sometimes my wife says, you sound like your father when I'm speaking to my kids about their schoolwork or their behavior. And she's right. I often find myself saying things very much like what my parents told me when I was younger. And if I don't know what to say, I look to Laura, who probably knows exactly what to say based on what her parents told her when she was younger. Without even thinking about it, we sometimes speak like our parents, behave like our parents, think like our parents. And that is not a bad thing. In fact, it can be a very good thing. Indeed, on this Mother's Day weekend, I'm mindful of how meaningful it can be to hear someone else say that they see a family resemblance between a parent and a child, particularly a mother and a child, especially if that means that some of a mother's care and love can be seen in her children. Though honestly, This is not something new, because I think Jesus is speaking of this very same reality in today's gospel. This is a very emotional moment in John's gospel. It's the Last Supper, and Jesus has just washed his disciples' feet, and then he tells the disciples that he is about to be betrayed and that his death was near. Judas leaves the room and Jesus says to the remaining disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He goes on to say that he is returning to his Father in heaven, but this journey will enable him to prepare our place in his Father's house. He says, I will come and take you 
to be with me so that we can be together for all eternity. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then Philip, poor Philip, he has to open his mouth and make a request that I have always imagined that he wanted to take back as soon as he said it. Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. As much as Philip might have wished that he could crawl under the table right at that moment, it allows Jesus to say, whoever has seen the Father has seen me. In other words, if you know me, you know the Father. And while Jesus seems a little disappointed that Philip and the others haven't already picked up on this family resemblance, what Jesus is really saying is, look at me. If you see me, you see what your heavenly Father looks like. Listen to me. If you hear me speak, you're hearing what your heavenly Father's voice sounds like. Watch me. If you see the way that I behave and act, that is revealing how God behaves and acts. Well, Jesus, you look like your Father. You sound like your Father. You act like your Father. And what a family resemblance. This is the amazing and radical Christian conviction that in the person of Jesus, we are catching a very glimpse of God. The invisible God becomes visible and touchable in Jesus Christ. The family resemblance is that strong. So if you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Many people struggle because we know that God is a spiritual reality. We know that God is beyond our comprehension, invisible to our physical eyes. And that fact can, at times, make God seem distant or disconnected or hard to know. So Jesus suggests to Philip and to us, If you want to know what God looks like and sounds like and acts like, just look at his son and then you'll see. It's also why we need to pay so much attention to Jesus in the Gospels. So if you want to know what your heavenly father looks like, he looks like his son. His son who was humble enough to be born in a barn, gentle enough to embrace children, Compassionate enough to hold hands of the sick. Strong enough to lift up the lowly. Generous enough to die on the cross. And victorious enough to rise from the dead. That's what God looks like. And if you want to know what God sounds like, well, he sounds like his son. A son who says, blessed are the peacemakers. A son who says, your sins are forgiven, now forgive 70 times 7. A son who says, when I was hungry, you fed me, and when I was naked, you clothed me. That is what God sounds like. And if you want to know how God acts, he acts like his son. A son who fed the multitudes, who calmed the storms, who healed the sick, who speaks truth, and who calls out sin and injustice when he sees it. That is how God acts, like his son. And we, as children of God, are created in God's image, like his son. In other words, there should be a very clear family resemblance connecting you, me, Jesus, and our Heavenly Father. Each of us is supposed to resemble God. When people see each of us, they should see Jesus and through him, our Heavenly Father. 
When people hear you and me, they should hear the words of Jesus and his Father. When people encounter us, they should find the work of Jesus and his Father, not just on Sunday mornings, but whenever others encounter us. Now, during these days when our lives have been radically altered, there are many people around the world and even in our community wondering, where do we find God? Where do we see God in the middle of this mess? So here's a suggestion. If you want to see what God is up to right now, pay attention to what God's people are up to right now. Right now, this congregation is preparing to feed those who are hungry in this community. And Christians around the world are preparing to do the same. We're supporting those who have lost their jobs, helping those who are facing economic hardship. Right now, children of God are checking in on their elderly neighbors, buying groceries for people that they've never met, calling up folks that they know live alone. Right now, Christians are praying at home, hopefully reading their Bibles more at home, spending more time with their family, taking a walk to be with God in nature. Right now, Christians are making sure that hungry school kids get their lunches. Right now, confirmands are writing letters to senior citizens who have to stay in their rooms. God's people are putting the needs of others ahead of their wants and desires. Right now, even in the midst of despair, Christians are boldly living with hope. So this week, whether you leave your house to go to work or the grocery store or not, I encourage you to offer this brief prayer or one like it. Lord, may every person I speak with today, may every person I call or email today, may every person I encounter today see Jesus in me. Because if they can say, you look like, you sound like, You act like Jesus. Well, that's a family resemblance that we all can rejoice in. Amen. Jesus is the cornerstone, came for sinners to atone. Till it's
Let us now affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in prayer for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, merciful God as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen members of your church as we are sent forth to proclaim your love, including Bill and Janine Hewitt, Tammy Hinkchen, Jeff and Amy Hooksema, and Phil and Pamela Homeblade, whom we remember this week. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy... Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety, including the Center for Hope, Carriage Town Ministries, and Family Promise here in Genesee County. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens, especially those we name before you in our hearts or on our lips now. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children and for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, including Maddie and Dario Nali and Nate and Melanie Van Dyke, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Generous God, you call us into your brilliant light and all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your sadness into joy. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.